All right, everyone, the video we are going to react to today is when a low tier changed melee forever. So let's get started. I've heard a lot of good Throughout things about this video. History, only a handful of characters have won big tournaments. In May of 2020, something huge occurred in the melee tournament scene. Roy is a character that is similar to Mars, what? but Roy is the sixth worst character in the entire game. So, Dude, also this happened? arc with Zane's Roy well, was actually Zane, so funny. Who is primarily one of the best Marth players in the world, decided to go from using his main Marth to now using Roy, having to adapt to the character's weaknesses in tournament. His reason for the change of characters. It's that people don't know how to play against Roy. Uh, they don't really know how to edge guard him, DI his throws, play versus him in general. With this, players would have to straight up learn the matchup as they go. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I will say, like, it's very, very common in Melee, a character, like, a game with so many characters that are, like, bad. Like, people don't want to play matchups. People don't want to play matchups if they're not, like, a good character. Sometimes not even that. I mean, of course, there are exceptions, right? But how common is it that people just quit out uh, games if they play against, like, Dr. Mario or Luigi, right? And that's not even, like, bad characters or something like Roy. It's like, for a lot of people, it was probably the first time. And I mean, I think it's also a cool aspect of Melee. Like, there is so much skill that can be displayed in Melee that even a character like Roy, if you have, a, you know, a person like Sane uh, playing them, there is more, more to these characters than meets the eye at first. Since Roy is also a low tier, no one wants to walk away with a loss to a bad character, which adds another layer to the pressure. With now changing his main for an upcoming tournament, he'd also change his tag to Don't Test Me. His alter ego that would in fact test <laughs> others. Yeah, that one is day, cool. He decided to enter a tournament with Roy when suddenly history was made. This is the story of Don't Test Me, The Wrath of Roy. Yeah, that was also very true, uh, as was stated in the video. Like, the pressure of losing to a bad character probably gets to a lot of people, too. The thing is, though, like, I I'm curious, like, if someone, like, saying mained Roy for, like, a long, long term time. Like, what would have happened? I, I really do think stuff like platform camping can be like quite effective against Roy because his aerials earlier, never kill. Roy is a low tier. Why? Well, for one, Roy has a sword that can be described as having a noodle as a sword. <laughs> See, the sword is able to reach opponents at a long range, but greatly lacks the powerful sweet spot that Marth's sword has. Instead, the sweet spot of Roy's sword is located towards the lower end of the blade. This means that Roy would have to somehow find a way to get into the opponent's range for a punish. He is also a fast faller similar to Fox and Falco, where they are easily juggled and killed. Another downside is that Roy's aerials are almost useless and laggy. Again, Roy just cannot seem to find a way to start a string even at far distances. However, one very big advantage in his toolkit is that Roy can rely a lot on crouch cancelling, which essentially means getting hit while crouching and reducing your knockback, which most Roy mains use to down tilt as a combo starter and later forward smashing as a kill setup. He also has great Roy's down tilt is honestly such attacks. a good move. Roy has to work immensely if he wants to take a game off any top tier character. But like, obviously a terrible character Marth overall, but like that Roy down tilt is actually so good. May 16th, 2020, Rona Rumble's East Coast 3 was getting ready to start. Since this was an online tournament, there wasn't a need to bring huge old CRT TVs. Dude, just imagine, just imagine for a second if uh, Marth had Roy's down tilt. Down tilt into grab? That would be scary. Players for the first time could enter a tournament in the comfort of their own home. Big names would enter a tournament such as JFlex, Ginger, Bobby Big Balls, Reeve, KJH, Aklo, and Don't Test Me himself with Roy. So we're gonna play Roy tonight in Homie Waffles' tournament. When the bracket begins, Zane gets a quick 2-0 and moves on to face against JFlex, 
a prominent Sheik main from New Jersey. Yeah, the yeah. Best of I mean, set. like a tall when player picking games, up the character often the means people will like Fox rank them higher. Is that he's playing a more campy style, not throwing out moves, and mainly just moving around the platforms, which is an odd thing to do against a low tier. Could it be that J Flex is already nervous? Homemade waffles. The tournament organizer of this tournament even references how J Flex is playing very safe against Roy. My man J Flex is showing Zane way too much respect. Bro, if I'm playing fucking Roy, I'm I'm walking forward. I'm not giving a fuck. J Flex takes the first stock. When Zane comes back, he is able to get hits in, but cannot seem to close out the stock until an edgeguard opportunity arises and kills Sheik at 199%. That's almost equivalent to Falco killing Jigglypuff with a pop-up down here at 175%. Somehow... Uh, okay, I, I just want to point, like, with, like, what Homie Waffle said. In a sense, like, it, I sort of agree and disagree at the same time. If you don't know a matchup at all, sometimes just, like, respecting a lot can be, you know, better, right? Rather than engaging a lot and, like, more easily be put in situations where you can get punished. Um... Uh, so sometimes I think it can be better to play safe if you don't like know what you're doing in a matchup. But of course, if you know how to play against a lot of these worse characters, you can overwhelm them uh, a lot. Basically to like just keep it shortly. But honestly against Roy, I feel like even if you know what you're doing, considering how hard it is for this character to kill. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is only hypothetical. We'll never see Sane actually like solo main Roy for years and years on end. But I do think like people would like try to start abuse uh platform camping more against Roy. I could be wrong, but I don't know. It just feels like a very obvious answer. Like Roy would just struggle so much to kill if people are always gonna be on platforms and stuff, especially with a lead. Now Zane gets the lead with an empty hop forward smash. J Flex brings it back. Zane hits a unique combo. That's cool he's laughing Roy. That's how I know Zane's like getting too good. He... But J Flex goes back to camp around the platforms, but Zane's Roy is in his head. Roy was in melee before there's a fire in him, I believe it. Oh my god. That DI. My man's just really clapping people with Roy. That's crazy. Zane wins the game. He learned that if he keeps sticking with his game plan, he can overcome this obstacle. But a few minutes later, JFlex takes the second game, which means that whoever takes the last game of this set moves on to the next opponent. Now that it's like super relevant, but like if you are basing your game plan around like camping platforms, it almost feels weird not banning this stage then. Don't get me wrong though, like Sheik in this matchup, chain grabs. But yeah, it's... Ooh, these spot dodges, though. With the neutral. Oh, yo! <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> don't test me! It's yeah, getting don't down test to it. the wire. Now, all Roy has to do is close it out. Damn, dude. That's crazy. It would have been funny if, like, closing it out there and we saw Roy, like, 150, 200, 250. When he moves on to the next match, there is a problem. He comes across Two Saint, one of Melee's best Jigglypuff mains in the world. One of, if not, Roy's worst matchup in the entire game. Normally, when Roy plays against a character like Fox or Falco, yeah, I'm not even gonna look at all those numbers. I feel like it's gonna be so many like hot takes grabs, on those numbers. Up percentage with up throw chain grabs and small combos that lead to death. But with Jigglypuff, there's almost no way of doing that. Roy has to be extra careful, or he could face a rest punish. When Jigglypuff is in the lead, this will force Roy to approach, which could result and making more mistakes and taking more damage as the set goes on. Don't test me, we'll have to somehow find a way to outplay Toussaint. The match is a best of 5, and game 1 is pretty close. 
Zayn does a forward throw and goes for a forward smash. <laughs> that tipper is... Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that should never ha happen in the first place, though. Forward throw, like, yeah, Puff should never even land on the ground from that, I feel. Takes the first stock instead. But I mean, I can't say Putting I'm an expert Zane in this matchup. Zane, adapting to Puff intelligently, uses a strategy where he racks a percentage, and when Puff reaches a high enough number, he does this. Bro. Damn, that's legit just how he has to kill him. Is Roy up throw, like, is it stronger than Mars? What's even more impressive is that Roy now has the lead. Zane then tries to go for the unthinkable. Yeah, I can't believe I don't know the Roy Puff matchup. What you just witnessed here is something only specific to Roy. This is the reverse up B. And although Zane didn't get the correct hitbox, Jigglypuff at any percentage, even 0%, Roy has the potential to do this. The thing is, I could be wrong here, but I feel like I did test this many, many years ago, ironically enough. And I'm pretty sure Puff can like just SDI into the up B so you get hit by more hits and you don't die even on Yoshi's. I feel like I did test that like probably back in like 08 or 09 or something. But I mean, yeah, if you're gonna be ready for that, you might as well just try to dodge the up B period, I guess. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you actually this can just like SDI in and eat more than like one hit. Shot. But even with this tool, Roy still struggles abundantly. The match is very even, but Zane takes the lead with the whiff punish F smash. Tusink closes a stock with an edge guard. Meanwhile, Roy does a forward throw into reaction tech forward smash. Zane. Wait. Forward smash. Oh wait, there it is again. That that looks That's like one of those things like, oh you don't You're not used to the matchup. He beats him on Dream So you Land, kinda bro. get like cheese. I mean, I'm right? not sure if oh, cheese no. is the right word, but he counterpicks to Dreamland for Game 2, the biggest stage in the tournament rules. Match 2 is mostly neutral exchanges, when Toussaint now ties up the game score, now being 1 to 1. The games would in fact be so close, that each match would at least be a last stock situation. Which eventually, would lead up to the last game of the set, making the points 2 to 2. Game 5. Who will advance? In the bracket. Yeah, it's like I, I, I feel like yeah, they could but wiggle, gambles with the neutral but I feel like they also the could DI differently, oh, and then not attempt, even needing to wiggle in the first place. Toussaint comes back and ties it up. He destroys Zane's stock with a zero to death. In what way can Zane manage to bring it back? This is the first time we see Zane having to approach more frequently since he is now behind. Zayn needs to adapt quickly. Panic is beginning to set in as he starts taking damage. It is now a 3 stock to Jigglypuff against Roy's potential last stock. Zayn by now has to find something that can keep him alive. He does some down tilts but it doesn't lead to anything. He gets a forward smash. All right. Let's see if in these type of scenarios, right. really is try to play through, it's play it's around good. like Two whatever can kill. And him. in Roy's case, it's but there smash, is something and I that guess changes counter, within don't test counter is extremely, and now, extremely risky. He begins to test two saint. Counter that rollout, yeah, it's probably too risky though. Oh, oh shit. Okay, <laughs> yo. Yeah, they did yeah, that's game. pretty. Uh, if I'm Roy, I'm not a terribly. Oh, Ooh. wait a minute. Dash Dance is transformation out. Yo, one good hilt from Roy and Roy will win. Oh, shit. Even when resetting to neutral, the battle is intense. Oh, shit. I actually have no idea how Usain oh, that air dodge. wins this. <gasps> oh. <laughs> With all these small hits, well, at, at least I am assuming Roy has somehow managed to bring this back. One grab and don't test me wins. Yeah. Oh, it's game. Oh no! That didn't kill. 
It is now time to end this. <laughs> Dude, this game is like almost going to time. <laughs> no way. Oh, the side be up my tilt. God, he really came back and with that oh, lag too? Heart. Bro. That was fucking crazy. I'm not gonna lie, that looks that. atrocious. No, don't test me wins. 3-2, baby. Zayn advances in the bracket. Noticing that he has to play KJH, one of Melee's most technical foxes, he will have to play with caution. And if he wins, he either gets to play against Bobby Big Balls, or Kentucky's very own Marth main, Reeve. But he has to win two consecutive matches if he wants to advance to the grand finals. But unfortunately for Zayn, KJH takes the first two games, meaning that KJH needs one more point to advance and Zane would be dropped down to the loser's bracket. But something was building up in the heart of Zane. The wrath of Roy awakens. This is a pretty funny music choice. Roy's our boy. Like, sometimes seeing Roy's aerials hit, it just makes you mad. Like, that fair just a second ago is like, nothing happens at 120. Counter? Like, literally nothing. Ooh, that was nice too. Yeah, it's a classic. Not the angle that throws correctly into F Smash. But I mean, again, like, if you never play against Roy, it's not gonna be part of your muscle memory, probably. Or not necessarily, at least. I ended up like overdoing it a little bit with that movement, but that oh, oh my god. Pivot. No. Get him! Oh, That's wait, so no, sad if Roy doesn't make it back. That was 100 percent the right play. Go out to get him. But that's so sad if Roy didn't make it back there. He falls so fast. Waffles, he can't believe it. Dude, I've never seen no shit like this before. That this is crazy. Zane does it. He defeats KJH with the reverse 3-0. And now he moves on to face against Bobby Big Balls. The difference is Zane crushes Bobby with a 3-1 win. Positioning himself in the grand finals. Zane is in the winner side of the bracket, but there is another story in the mix and that Ginger lost in the first round of top 16 to Reeve and had to beat 5 different opponents to get to Grands. Ginger is at max momentum, looking to make one of Melee's craziest losers runs in history. On one side, we have a Roy, a low tier that somehow managed to make it to the very end and just needs to win one more set to make history. On the other, a Falco that made a long losers run that has to now face the pressure of losing to a low tier. Once the match begins. Oh, yo, yo, he's bringing it back. I was gonna say, don't okay, run to the ledge. Okay, we reset, reset. All right, Ginger wins the first set, three-one. 
Ginger resets the bracket, which means they have to play another best of five. This is where the true test comes in. They each go back and forth. Is Saint messing around with Roy at all any longer? The last Where's that face game. entirely over? Game five. Well, don't test me. Take this tournament. Or will Ginger defeat Don't Test Me once again? Game five. Don't test me versus Ginger. This one game will determine who gets a bag. Oh, that was a good that try. Yeah, <laughs> Roy has never played for this much money probably in the history of ever. Don't test me. He has a ranked account for Roy. Can't. Let's go. Oh, Ginger fucked up. I was gonna say, please don't DI into the throw, especially not after the bumble. <laughs> Yo. No. Don't test me, bro. Damn, we got Ginger playing massive. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh. Nice. No follow up. Ginger just playing mad patient now. I think he's a little shook, dude. Oh no! And he yep, that there's the throw, throw at smash. Awful. The classic. Yo, don't fucking test this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he crossed it down to him? Yeah. Saints power shields are no honestly very, way, very good. Bro. Okay. Alright. Alright, y'all. Last game. Last stop for the tournament. Who we got? Ginger, don't test me. Yeah, this is going to be scary. Know. Last stock, game five against Roy. You have nothing to win at that point. Oh, you have everything to lose. Okay, Ginger's going off. If Zane gets a fucking grab, though, he can win. Oh, no, not that, Ginger. Not that. Oh, he's like, yo, if he rolled in, he's going to let it rip. Oh, my God. This is fucking epic. No. Peace out, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm not upset, but I just don't want to have to deal with whatever I'm about to experience. So, have a good one. GG's to Zane. Catch you guys later. Son! What? Son, are you serious? Yeah, I can imagine it, it probably was oh, extremely, extremely toxic for the people that did lose to Zane's Roy. One of the most historical moments in Amelia's history. Don't test me. Prove that any Roy could win any tournament. And don't forget to never test him. Oh, what the? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, hey. Oh, my God. I'm ugly. This is what people see. What? Oh, what? Dude, I think it's so crazy how, like, Zane or Don't Test Me brought Roy to, like, the craziest level, right? I've never seen anything like that happen in my entire life. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm like what the heck? I think it's just so interesting seeing a low tier come out on top against, like, top tier characters and, and winning a tournament. It's just, it's crazy. Like, who does that? You know who does that? Don't test me. So, yeah, this is my first time using a green screen, and uh, I just want to try it out. So, yeah, as you can see, I got a haircut, so, uh... Pretty happy about that. What do you guys think? <laughs> but yeah, I want to stream more. It's just that, dude. I think just balancing like making videos and like trying to stream is, is really hard, and I want to do that like really bad. Oh, now you guys can see my crooked nose up close. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> oh my god, my T2. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Sub to this channel. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I don't have. I mean, I have a Snapchat, but I don't want you guys to. Uh, I don't want the pair of social viewers following me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. Dude, I want to. I want to put. I want to put like cool ass like fit pics on that. You know what I mean? Like, like I want. I want to like drop some pics before a video drops. You know, that's what I want to do. That seems. That seems fire. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys. Mm. All right, that's gonna be it for the video. I mean, it was. Uh, it was fun to see. It was fun to see. I mean, it was a long time, obviously. Uh, these uh, tournaments happened, but I mean, it was a funny arc seeing uh, Saints Roy. I mean, Roy is, despite all of that, a terrible character. And I'm still curious to see, hypothetically, what would have happened if he kept playing Roy year after year. But I think it's a testament to, like, partially, like, you know, people not knowing matchups that are from these type of characters. Uh, but also, like, how many layers there is to melee as a game and how much a better player can outplay 
uh, you know, still great players, but not quite as good, right? Uh, but yeah, so now it was a fun video, well made, and absolutely make sure uh, to give them a follow. I'm sure, they would appreciate it. This video actually already have a lot of views, so I'm sure a lot of follows and stuff happened already. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching.